what is up everyone so today uh, we're gonna be installing well first of all a long time no see but today we're gonna be installing a set of tubular control arms and coil over suspension for the firebird so last time I guess last time I posted I posted about the um, changing out the power steering gearbox which that's been great it runs and drives smooth um, now it's time for the suspension so Thought process behind this was, you know, I have a I have a quicker ratio gear, uh, steering box, and uh, basically what I want to do is that I want to get the, the the car set up for performance, right? So before I throw any power at it, I want to get the suspension done right, and kind of on a budget also. So what I have is some um, uh, single adjustable Q1 coilovers. Uh, here's the coil. It comes with uh, some thrust bearings. And these basically just screw into the bottom portion of the tubular control arms. And these are the coils. Now these are 500 pound coils. I think if you do your research about the Firebird, um, I think the average price for these coils, or the average uh, weight that these coils are gonna support are gonna be the 450 pounds. Now this being a, a fully optioned out car back in this day, so having AC, power steering, power brakes obviously a huge 400 inch and 6.6 liters it's a little front heavy it's actually a lot front heavy so um i decided to go with the 500 pound uh spring rate because of that to do the suspension first front suspension and then eventually i'm going to do the rear suspension and then add power um as i go so that's going to be the plan for the car so and yeah we'll see oh let's see and, I, and also switching to disc brakes. So you might be asking yourself, oh, he knows how to install suspension. I have never done suspension on a car ever in my life. So this is gonna be my first time attempt of doing it. It seems pretty simple enough. Take the wheels off. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of extra, just take the, well, I'm taking everything off, right? So um, one bolt right here, one bolt right there, one right there, four for the upper control arm, two for the lower control arm. Spindles. Now the hardest part about this job is going to be actually taking the old spring out. If you're not careful, because this is a heavier car and because this is a not a coil, it's not a capture coilover system. The spring is loose, so there's basically two ways to do it. You can use, use a spring compressor kit, or you can use a jack, which is what I have. I might I don't have a spring uh, compressor, and you have to be really careful about doing that only because um there's a lot of potential energy in that spring being bound up like that and if it releases prematurely it can go flying so you know but so many people have done it before probably gonna be okay uh yeah so let's get started Thank you. 
uh, these two bolts because they're actually held by just nuts on the end of them. So if you twist them from here, they just like they just like I guess they just twist. They don't really they don't really unscrew. So you have to have. Luckily, I had this little wrench here, and I just plugged it behind here, and it got stuck against the control arm, and then this one got stuck against the uh, also the back of the control arm. So now that should just slide off, which it does, which we don't need that anymore. That goes in trash. And then you have access to your spindle. All right, so my camera died, so I got a little bit further, but I just wanted to show you guys um, for the sway bar. I ended up just cutting the link because I could not get a socket in there and just kept slipping and it was just so um, it was almost like rust welded on there so uh, I just ended up cutting it and everything was fine links are like I don't know like 10 bucks um, I went ahead and took off the shock the next thing is is that we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this top castle nut take that out then uh, undo the castle nut and then just loosen it we're gonna take it all the way and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to just hit this until it drops. And then once we hit it until it drops, then we can get the jack stand under and uh, slowly lower, the, lower it. So after the spring's out, we should be able to take the control arms off. And then I'll go ahead and clean all this up and then spray paint. Alright, so, uh, with help of my dad, um, I, to get this nut out, you need somebody to, to, to hold the, th the three quarter inch nut, and this whole bottom should pop out, so I got one right here, and then one right here, so this should come out. All right, so this bolt right here, same thing on the other side, and then there's gonna be two of these, and then these little shims right here. All right, so got the control arms out really this is how shot this was this bushing was actually missing you see that see how loose that is that's uh there should be a bushing right there but mine was missing so it was a good thing they were replacing this so here is so obviously that's what came out this is what's going in so these are just two blood control arms not much of a difference in terms of weight but these should be a lot stronger and obviously there's brand new bushings. It wasn't actually recording, but I went ahead and just sprayed it down with this, um, let's see, what is it called? This Raptor liner, uh, tough undercoat. But since this stuff is pretty much dry to the touch already, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, 
the top control arm in. Alright, so it's super, like I said before, it's super important that you keep these. These are little shims. This is how you get your alignment done in this car. Basically, tighten these bolts up on each side. On the other one, mine had four right here, two right here. I'm going to keep it that same way. Now, obviously, this is not the same control arm geometry, so I don't know if it's going to need that, but I'm going to keep it in there just in case because it's better to have it and I need it than need it and I have it, so... Uh, when I do take it into the alignment shop, they could just pop one of those off, and then hopefully that'd be enough to 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 get my alignment done. You basically just bang on this until um, the hole lines up. Now this one, this one was the difficult one. Um, I could not get get it to line up properly, and they had maybe like like one sixteenth of a of a of a of an overhang, and I was struggling with getting that lined up. So I was hitting the absolute heck out of this, and then uh, I had to pry it with the screwdriver, and then I had to use the jack to kind of hold it up, and then. The biggest obstacle I had was the best way to do it is there's a little there's a little hole. Let's see if you can see. There's a little hole in the subframe you see right there, and basically the bolt goes through that hole. It goes through here and it lines up through here and then right here. So uh, the nut goes off of that side. So and the reason is is because it's way easier to get the bolt through that way than putting the bolt that way and threading the nut on there. Um, my issue was when I put it in there, I dropped the bolt inside the subframe. So obviously there's no way to get to any of this except for this little hole right here and that bigger hole right there. So I was struggling for a little bit, but now, uh, we got both arms installed top and bottom and we're going to go ahead and put the, um, we're going to go ahead and put the probably the spin the bottom spindle on first right here and then the coilovers and then we'll go ahead and press this into place so these are the bolts that came with the coilover as you see they are going to be too big for these holes which are threaded anyway so what we're going to do is drill these out So yeah, that's how um, that's how you install coilovers and control arms on a uh, F body. So uh, basically, what the things I haven't done and I'm not going to do yet is that you would just attach a sway bar link from obviously the sway bar to one of these holes, depending on where it is. I would imagine this one would probably be the best option. 
and you would attach the tie rods to the uh, steering linkage. I'm gonna end this video right here. And the reason for that is there are a couple of things that I wanna do in a later video. I'm gonna be doing a brake conversion kit install on this, on this vehicle and that's gonna have me do certain things like grind away a little bit on this arm so I could attach a, spe a special bracket to it to hold the uh, brake caliper. So what I would do now after that is that I would, I would get a wheel on here and then I would um, see what the ride height is. Now obviously this is at the lowest setting and that's because it's the easiest setting to have in order to um, install the coilovers, right? So I do have some special wrenches that I can go ahead and uh, install and um, tighten that up to, to, to boost the uh, distance. And uh, yeah, that's it. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.